three. Tell them what your favorite movie was from 2023. Man, speaking of movies, I've been tricked recently. I don't know, I don't know how y'all do with watching movies. I don't go to the movie theater very often anymore. We went and watched um, Inside Out 2. I did not realize how much movies cost. Uh, you, almost, you almost need to, yeah, you almost have to remortgage your house to go to the movie theater. Uh, so I watch most of my movies at home, and uh, recommendations like come on my news feed. Now I'm learning they're just tricking me. I don't know how you guys feel. Uh, but I, I was tricked into watching Godzilla Minus One. I don't know if y'all are Godzilla fans. I had never seen a Godzilla movie. I am not a fan. It did not win me over. Uh, so I don't recommend you waste your time watching Godzilla Minus One. I also was tricked into watching Under Paris. Has anybody watched that on Netflix? A shark shows up in the, in the river in Paris. It is another terrible movie that I do not recommend that you waste your time watching. <laughs> so... We're in the, the fourth part of our, our summer series that we do every single year, and we call it At the Movies. That's why you smell popcorn. That's why you see characters out and cutouts. Uh, what it is, is it's a study that brings together the story of God, which we find in the scriptures or the Bible. And in that story of God, we put into conversation with stories from our culture. It's something I've always loved to do since I was in seminary. One of my projects was uh, spiritual formation, like do something on how can we as followers of Jesus be formed spiritually. And for me, I was like, it has to be possible through watching movies. And so this has always been a love for me to be able to look at stories from our culture and then wonder, what does God have to say? And so what I've done is I have chosen movies, popular movies from the past year, and I've cut clips for you to watch together. And so I want you to watch uh, the first clip that I have chosen for today's movie. So watch this clip. Thank you. 
All right, I'm just curious to see what I'm working with here. If you have seen the Barbie movie, shake your head, yes. All right, so not many of you have seen this movie. <laughs> oh, this clip, this scene is about halfway through the movie. And so since many of you haven't seen the movie, something you need to know about this movie. I'm not telling you everything. I'm not going to spoil it all, but there is something you need to know. Uh, in this movie, there's an actual Barbie land like an actual physical Barbie land. And that Barbie land is disconnected physically, but connected in some weird way to the real human world. And in this Barbie land, everything is perfect. Everything is beautiful, and every day is the best day according to Barbie. But then something happens that disrupts the, the perfect nature of Barbie land. And Barbie learns that she needs to go to the real human world in order to possibly solve whatever has caused this problem. So she goes to the real human world, this, this, this journey that she takes, that's, which is really strange how she does it. And, and while she's in the human world, she is abducted by Mattel, the toy company employees, and they take her to their headquarters. They walk her into this meeting room that you just watched and uh, she enters as the CEO and his board are discussing what to do about this situation. Their plan is to put her back into the box to make sure they control the situation and make sure it doesn't get any worse. But something about Barbie tells her this isn't right. She trusts her gut and she runs away to her escape. That's what you just watched. Now, about 20 minutes later in the movie, Barbie is lamenting Ken's patriarchal takeover of Barbie land. And you, you can't know why I'm smiling if you haven't seen what happens to Barbie land. It's no longer that the Barbies are in control. Now all the kins of Barbie land are taking over control. And so as she's lamenting this terrible situation that she's in, all of a sudden there's this human mom and her daughter who are with Barbie in Barbie land. And they're there to hopefully help her solve this situation. But when all of the the ways they thought would solve it don't work, Barbie begins, begins to blame the human mom for causing this whole thing to come into being. Um, so watch this clip. So, as you can see, Barbie does not want her life as she knows it to change. And just the thought of it for her as you, as you watch in this scene causes her to, to, to give up. 
You know the story can't end with Barbie flat on her face. So the final minutes of this movie um, brings us to a scene where Barbie meets her maker. And when Barbie meets her maker, she's empowered to make a decision that is one of the most difficult, uncomfortable decisions of her life. So we're going to watch this clip together. I'm just going to warn you, this is like a six-minute clip. Uh, so if you need some popcorn, now would be the time to get it. Um, otherwise, grab some tissues because some of you will be crying by the time this is over. So watch this.
I did not watch this movie with my daughters and wife the first time they watched it. And my daughter came home and said, Dad, you have to include this movie in the movie series. And then since that moment, you know, it's been about a year, I think, since this movie's come out, she's, she's heard me preach messages, and she's like, Dad, the song, the song you just listened to, she's like, it sounds like it would make so much sense to the message that you preach. I'm wondering, like, what were we made for? Um, when I watch this movie, I'm not sure if you can pick up on it because you haven't watched the whole movie. I've tried my best to give you clips for you to feel a sense of what I was gaining from watching this movie, but it brought me to a question as I watched it. And the question that I have to ask myself as I watch this movie is, who am I if I don't play the role in my life that's always been expected of me? Like, how will I live when I don't know any other way to live? That's the question Barbie is asking. I've always just been Barbie. And I've been stuck in this box, and I don't know how to be anything else. And to break outside of that role feels really terrifying, she said. But as you saw in this final clip, um, the invitation that's extended to her from her creator is to take the creator's hands and feel. Feel what it would like to imagine something different. And so I wonder today, as we, as we ask God to speak to us, as we hear and see and, and engage this movie, if there's something God might say to us, I wonder if there's anybody here today who could imagine in a similar fashion God extending hands to you and inviting you to take God's hands so that you somehow could begin to get a glimpse of what life might be if you were to say yes to a different new way of living your life. And I believe that God, through Jesus, is the one who frees us and allows us to let go of old familiar ways, ways that have been placed on you by the expectations of this world. And so what I wanna do today is I want to look at the gospel of John chapter 10 because it speaks to this part of who we are and invites us to, to imagine what would it mean for us to allow God to, to help us say goodbye to some old ways and step into some new ones. Uh, so go with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Uh, we're gonna read, uh, uh, starting with verse one, all the way down to verse 18. There's a lot happening in these verses. Uh, there's some um, language used here that, that in, in one sense um, is speaking to reality that maybe in another is hard to understand, so I'm not trying to pick it all apart and explain every single detail but I do believe by the time we start and stop talking about this text, you'll understand what this gospel writer is trying to do. It says in John chapter 10, verse one, very truly, this is Jesus speaking, very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own. And my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. I did not know I chose your son's voice, name so many times in today's scripture. <laughs> Crazy. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, we're given this image of a thief climbing over a fence in order to get to some sheep. That's in verse 1. Then in verse 10, we find out that the only purpose of this thief is to steal, kill, and destroy the sheep. In contrast to the thief, in verses 2 through 5, we're introduced to this, this vision of a shepherd. And the shepherd, we're told, is recognized by two different factors. Number one, the shepherd is recognized by the fact that the shepherd goes through the gate, which has been opened by the gatekeeper. That's how you recognize the shepherd. The second way that we recognize the shepherd is that the shepherd speaks individually and directly to the sheep. So the sheep know the shepherd's voice. Now this comparison, or you might say contrast, between this thief and the shepherd is both a warning and a revelation. It's a warning and a revelation. The warning is there is a thief who wants to sneak into your life and take it from you. And the way this thief, this thief, <laughs> the way this thief sneaks into your life is through a way that you can't really recognize. It, it's so impossible to really know that it's happening because it carefully and very cleverly and in a way that subtly intrudes your existence without you even knowing it. And then when the moment is right, it traps you in a box that you can't get out of. I, I'm just wondering, do do any of you feel like in your lifetime you've been trapped in a box? Like this is who you're supposed to be. And this is, about, this is who, how you're supposed to act. And these are the things you're supposed to think. And this is the way you're supposed to relate to the world. The way the evil works in your life is to build that box and put you in it, but you don't know you're in it. And the box is really uncomfortable, but it's familiar, so you stay in it. So if the thief comes to destroy your life, that's the warning. Let me tell you about the revelation. The revelation that we find in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, is that Jesus is the good shepherd who comes to free you to know something of how your life can be given more of what you're made to experience. That's what we learn. We have this thief. And now we have this shepherd, and according to the word, three separate times in verse 11, verse 15, and verse 17, Jesus refers to himself as the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And then in verse 18, Jesus says something that you cannot miss. Not only does he call himself the good shepherd who lays down his life, he makes a really bold statement. He says this, no thief takes it from me. I lay it down of my own accord. So in these verses, there's an emphasis on Jesus' own volition, meaning Jesus gets to choose when to take up and when to lay down his life. There is nobody coming in, no power that exists, no evil in the world that can come in and snatch away the life of Jesus that was given to him by God his Father. It's interesting. Because as you read this text, what Jesus is trying to communicate to those who are his followers and thus to you and I today is that you, through Jesus, have that same power given to you through Jesus. That you and your life can be given to the thief who only comes to steal it and destroy it. Or you can exercise what God gives to you, which is the ability to let go of the old and take on something new. 
and it's only, it's only through Jesus. But here's the hard part. When we think about something new, when we think about stepping outside the box, it feels terrifying because it means so much that we don't understand. But what I want to tell you today is that uh, you are free to listen to the voice of Jesus, the shepherd, who leads you down really, really good paths. And to listen to that voice and to follow it, the challenge for you is stepping out of the box that evil and the thief has been keeping you in. Now, it's impossible for me to, to explain what your box is that has been made for you because every person's story is unique. But here's something that I know. I know that the box that has been designed for you is designed to consume you as long as you stay in it. And so today, as we close out this message, I want to pray for all of you. And what I want to pray today is that you would be a little bit rebellious like Barbie and you would run away from your box. <laughs> See how I brought it back around the Barbie movie? Yeah. Nobody's impressed with that? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> that took a lot of effort, everybody. Come on. All right, yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. I want you or invite you to take the hands of God and let God show you what there is for me more for you to discover in this life. Hmm. What you were made for. So stand with me today. I guess I messed up. I should have wore pink today. It is on my shoes. I think that's purple, not pink. But you, you, might, you might not see the same colors I see. I don't know. That's pink? Okay, whatever you say. All right, so just think about it for a moment. I know, I know it's hard, and I know sometimes we don't, we don't like to go down the road of thinking about the difficulties of our existence. But, but I, I just want to start with spouses in the room. Let's just start with you. And I'm going to challenge you a little bit, spouses. Spouses in the room, you know something about your spouse, whether it's a wife or a husband. You know that that spouse has expectations for you and how you will interact with them. And you know that if you step outside of those expectations, that things don't always go the way that you hope. You feel me on that, everybody? Unless your spouse is perfect. And I'm not the perfect spouse, and Brooklyn would tell you that. But I think you get this idea that when you wake up in the morning, your spouse is like, has a box that wants to put you in, not for your bad, but for their protection. Just think about that for a moment. Now, I, I want to speak to others in the room. All of us are kids of somebody. Somebody raised us, whether it's our mom and our dad, or just our mom or just our dad, or uh, somebody who isn't blood relative. Maybe it was a situation that I can't even name because I don't know what it is, but somebody raised everybody in this room. And everybody who was raised by somebody, those who raised us had expectations for us. Things that they needed us to be in order for their world to operate the way they wanted their world to operate. And that feels like a box. That's the only time you ever got in arguments with your parents is when you stepped outside of the box they wanted to put you in. Now, apply that to your job. Apply that to your to your relationship, to your coach. Apply that to the sport that you play. Everybody in this world is trying to fit you into this design that they have for you because that's who they need you to be. And what I happen to believe is that in all the ways that that harms you, because some ways it frees you, like hopefully the way that the church tries to, to guide you in life is something that sets you free. But what I happen to believe is that when you're placed into boxes by those around you in their own self-protection, that's not the Spirit of God leading you with the Good Shepherd's voice calling you. That to me is the thief coming in trying to steal and destroy good things that God has for you in your life. Because what you find is if I break out of this role that I have played, it will really mess up my world and that's too terrifying. And so you lay on the ground like Barbie face down. And what God is calling you to is to be brave, to be resilient, to be able to face those, those expectations that have been placed on you and to be able to recognize and say, that's not an expectation that God has for me. 
That's not something that God is calling me to be or to step into because I know it's not for my good. So God, I wanna be brave enough to take your hands and imagine something different. That's what I wanna pray for today, is can you just begin to imagine something different without your body turning and shivering in fear? But can you say, God, I know there's more and I wanna follow you into that. Let's pray today. God, we are imperfect human beings. And because of so much struggle in the world, in the midst of the good, there's always some brokenness. In the midst of the healing, there's, there's always something that comes along because that's the power of the thief, of the evil one, wanting to take your good creation and your good created human beings and, and sneak into our life and take it away from us and then just mess it up. And God, because we're broken human beings, we are often the tools that become the ones who allow that to be something that holds other people in their places. But God, today we're calling on you to break us free. We wanna hear your voice. We wanna recognize your words. We wanna hear the things that you say to us because God, what you tell us is you don't sneak over the gate, you, you come right through it. And, and when you speak to us, God, we understand and we hear you. And, and we know that when you say things to us, it's for our good. So today, God, will you let the movie uh, that we just watched some clips from give us an imagination to be able to wonder, is there a life that looks different than the one I'm living? Can I break away from what's familiar and can I move toward something that gives me a, a redeemed future. God, give us that courage today to run away from the old and embrace the new. In your name we pray.